Joining me now is Hassan Piker. Uh, he uh, is part of the TYT network. He does breakdown and and now a new show, Agitprop. Uh, Hassan, uh, welcome. And uh, listen, you're on because uh, you said uh, some things that a lot of people, including myself, find very offensive. Uh, you did not say it on the Young Turks Network. You said it on your own Twitch channel. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're gonna take him uh, one at a time and have a conversation about it. In the past, when conservatives have said offensive things, um, I have said that uh, they should keep their job and we should have a conversation about it. I said it about Megyn Kelly, Don Imus, and Rush Limbaugh. And so here we are, uh, I'm living up to what I said about conservatives and progressives, we're having a conversation. So uh, you said America deserved 9-11, did you mean that? No, obviously not, especially considering the fact that while that is a very viral quote that is going around currently, uh, if uh, those people were at least even remotely charitable or cared about the actual truth of what I was talking about, they would understand that within context, I was simply referencing the fact that all of the foreign policy decisions and our arming of insurgent groups in the region and our efforts in destabilizing the Middle East have a direct consequence, a boomerang effect rather, if you will, in in causing 9-11. Of course, every part of what I advocate for is against violence. Uh, I, I abhor violence, I think it's awful. And as a matter of fact, I was very frustrated with the fact that uh, Dan Crenshaw, a person who uh, four times voted nay on, on bills that would stop arming Saudi Arabia. Uh, he voted no four times on those bills, uh, it, it would, would turn around and talk about uh, the necessity for endless violence. And that uh, this simply was happening because these people this simply was happening because of uh, because these people just hated us. They hated us because they hate us. I'm paraphrasing, but I thought that was awful. I, I thought that that was horrific. And uh, in that moment, I said I thought at the very least I was saying that you can draw a direct line, basically that it was a consequence of all of the things that we have done in the region. This is not a controversial thing to say, uh, which is precisely why I followed up by saying. What, why are you guys getting upset at me? There's a live chat, there's a back and forth conversation on Twitch. For those of you who are unfamiliar, said, why are you getting upset at me? Nothing I'm saying is controversial, implying that I didn't even understand immediately why what I was saying was uh, so outside of the bounds of reason, considering that uh, Hillary Clinton has had a similar and correct opinion on this, talking about how we did fund Al Qaeda okay, and, but and Noam Chomsky and numerous other academics on both sides of the yes. political spectrum. So when you're talking about one of the causes of 9-11 being American foreign policy, it's not just Chomsky, Donald Trump has said Donald Trump things. has said that as well. I understand yeah. that, I understand yeah. that. But you understand now, and not just now, but you understood fairly soon after you said it, that saying Americans deserve 9-11 is a completely different statement and one that's wrong. No, I didn't say Americans deserve 9-11, I said America deserves 9-11. Right, but that's and still in that wrong. Moment, well, maybe you can chalk it up to English being my second language or whatever you wanna chalk it up to. Obviously, if I followed that statement up immediately with, well, we're still continuing to fund the, the nation state responsible for this and we act like they are our greatest allies, when that kind of arms sale uh, and and uh, I understand like the resources. overall policy point you're making, Hassan. But saying it that way is clearly wrong. Yes, because it leaves people with the impression yes, that you. Yes, I I should have used more precise and and better uh, use of the language there. I I it's 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 messed up that I that I would even uh, give the opportunity to the right to to uh, try to morally grandstand on an issue like this when they. Have uh, they are 100% responsible for all of the bloodshed that has been caused? Uh, even some other outlets in the mainstream media are also uh, culpable in this circumstance. Look, 3,000 people died, and that's terrible. That is a horrific event. I've covered this issue numerous times. I've covered the politicization, the the way that media has politicized it and the way that politicians have politicized this issue numerous times. There's an article I wrote two years ago on 9-11 on Huffington Post that you guys can go check out if you wanna understand exactly what I mean. These are the same people that justified an illegal war in Iraq. These are the same people that normalized this same kind of violence. And that's precisely my point is that especially a congressperson who who suffered, like who, who sacrificed personally and and is now using that sacrifice to to in a very civil fashion, albeit uh, justify 
endless warfare is abhorrent to me. I know that I was I know that I was inappropriate. I understand that, which is precisely why I took action immediately as soon as I realized like, oh, this is going to be misconstrued. I don't want this to be weaponized. I don't want this to be I don't want this to offend people. I immediately stopped the stream. I deleted the the VOD, the video on demand, and and I continued after that to to So you deleted it before any right winger wrote an article about it no, or not. No, of course. Of course. Of course. I because look I talk about uh, Nazis, crypto fascists, uh, and the alt right quite frequently. Uh, I am uh, vocally in defense of a lot of the uh, a lot of the things that they oppose. Okay, anti fascism being the primary thing, which is precisely why I have a lot of people who are waiting, sniping, like looking to snipe comments out of context in exactly the same fashion that they did um, last night. And take it up the chain of command as quickly as possible and escalate it into a situation where I have thousands of thousands of people very publicly talking about how they want to brutally torture me and execute me. All right. Uh, yeah. Which is weird, but whatever. I got you. So, look, uh, to me, that's monumentally important that uh, you misspoke and that you did not mean that. If you meant it, it would be a totally different conversation. Well, the- you pulled a video immediately showing, uh, in my opinion, that you didn't mean it. Okay, but by the way, now, that was like now there's like- a whole series of lies saying that you support Al Qaeda and terrorism. <laughs> when, when, look, I, this is really important because the point you're making is Dan Crenshaw uh, is. Uh, voting yes to Saudi Arabia and funding them, and, and Saudi Arabia has funded a lot of that terrorism. I'm going to get to the comments uh, you made about Crenshaw, which are also offensive and abhorrent. Yeah, but on that front, it's the I'm not wrong in saying that that's the the point they're making is the exact opposite of what you were actually well, saying. Well, yeah. The the question I would ask is this: If I am a supposedly a fan of all of the terrorism that is ongoing around the world, or a fan of Al Qaeda, as uh, some other YouTubers who have a gigantic platform have put it, then why would I be upset at uh, the the government's decision to continue uh, funding these groups? Or why would I have been upset originally at the government's decision to fund these groups? And then why would I be upset at the fact that we are still continuing to fund and supply arms? To the Saudi Arabian Kingdom, which then happened to find their find themselves in the hands of Al Qaeda. This is all factually correct information. This is all well documented. Uh, like the the arms that we have sold to Saudi Arabia at this point, and they are the number one uh, country that buys the most arms from us, as Donald Trump put it, and as Reagan put it back in '86, uh, when there was additional criticism against selling arms to Saudi Arabia. Why would I criticize that if I'm if I'm in support of Al Qaeda? They're also the number one purveyor of terrorism, and that's why we fight against the Saudi government. Uh, progressives do. All right. Uh, so now let's turn to the comments you made about Dan Crenshaw. Yes. So uh, in and you, uh, you know, I guess in an attempt at satire, uh, made very crass comments about the eye that he lost in Afghanistan. Uh, so first of all. Uh, at least everyone is assuming it's satire, including Dan Crenshaw. I'll quote him in a second. Was a satire? Yeah, I don't think that the Mujahideen are actually brave. That was simply a reference to exact John Rambo three, first and foremost. Very famous reference to John Rambo three that featured uh, this movie is dedicated to the brave Mujahideen soldiers of Afghanistan. Uh, and on top of that, it was a reference to the fact that. Ronald Reagan also considered them to be brave when he was arming them. When he escalated the arms that were, uh, when when he increased the amount of uh, funding and and training and arms and stinger missiles that we we were giving to these groups, that then uh, branched off and became the Taliban and became Al Qaeda. Uh, So my point was, hey, we're doing the exact same things that we have done in the past over and over again. At what point will we go? You know what? Maybe we should stop meddling in the Middle Eastern affairs, maybe we should stop funding insurgency groups that we consider to be allies to ourselves and then get surprised when they turn around and use those weapons against us. Okay, I'm all about I, stopping I, the bloodshed. So I understand that and I agree with that point. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I think that uh, what you said was horribly counterproductive and, and offensive. We'll get to that in a second. I wanna at least show you guys what uh, some of the things that Crenshaw and Hassan said. I had on Twitter. So when you let's go to graphic 203 here. 
So no, I'll get the Crenshaw in a second. Uh, 203, that's Reagan meeting with the Mujahideen. That's the reference that Hassan was making and put on Twitter. The refer 202 is the reference to the end of Rambo 3 or whatever. This film was dedicated to the brave Mujahideen fighters of Afghanistan. We did fund them. Yes, they were fighting the Soviet Union at the time. That's obviously important context, but, <laughs> yeah. but we did have blowback when they turned on us. Now, Dan Crenshaw, I actually thought was, uh, actually took it really well. He went on Laura Ingram's program today and had a, uh, a lot of uh, things to say about uh, Hassan and the Young Turks that I don't necessarily agree with. But he has acknowledged throughout that of course it was satire. Here's his tweet, he said, Hassan seems to confuse improvised explosive device with some sort of, uh, with some weird terrorist fantasy. And of course he lost his eye in an IED explosion. Uh, and he says, LOL, sorry for tricking you Hassan. You're no Pete Davidson, stop trying so hard. He repeated that on the Laura Ingram program today as well. And look, I think that I disagree with Dan Crenshaw's policies, but in regards to an incredibly crass and offensive joke you made, he's handled it like a champ. I agree. I agree. I think he I think he uh, took it like a champ. I would not have expected that considering, like I said, the overwhelming amount of commentary that I've received so far on the uh, on the issue is uh, uh, just very public uh, displays of trying to uh, kill me and fantasizing about murdering me or whatever, which is fine. It's part of the job. I understand. Um, having said that, however, I have to make one note. Okay, service does not guarantee uh, respect. It should not. I'm sorry. This is the exact same kind of jingo. This is the exact same kind of sentiment that leads to uh, the 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 militant attitude that the United States has. If you have served, and then on top of that are using that service to continue sending uh, like loads of young men and women overseas to die or to come back home uh, and, and, and fail to reintegrate into society just exclusively for the profits of the military industrial complex, then no, you don't deserve uh, respect by virtue of service. I'm sorry. Well, Haas, there's a giant difference, right? So I don't agree with John McCain's, uh, when he was alive, his warmongering, right? His policies were uh, terrible, but I do respect that he stayed in that uh, prisoner war camp and uh, when his, when they said you can go because you're the son of an admiral, but he stayed with his fellow soldiers. Uh, We've or had fellow troops. public disagreements on the way I've uh, talked about John McCain as well. Yeah, and so saying I disagree with Dan Crenshaw's policy is one thing, making that incredibly crass joke. I mean, how do you not see that it's counterproductive? Did you think that Americans would say, "Oh my God, uh, that joke is so funny," or like, like, can you not see how most Americans would say this horrible thing about his eye injury would be offensive and then stop listening to you? If I, uh, if I considered what uh, the the popular thing to say was going to be every time I said something, I probably wouldn't be advocating for the things I believe in. The final note I will say is this, okay? I would rather be uncivil and advocate for the morally righteous cause, which is anti-war and anti-imperialism, bringing our troops back home, uh, ending the unjustifiable and unnecessary bloodshed, than be incredibly polite and incredibly civil and talk about uh, ongoing genocide and and uh, refuse to acknowledge it, and even worse than that, vote in favor of the government, in favor of the country that is continuing that genocide with our weapons. You can it, be as civil as you want. Yeah, if if you had said that on the TYT network, I would have pulled that video. Uh, I think it's offensive, it's over the top, and I understand you were trying to do satire, but I thought it was a terrible job at that. And and. I get why people are offended by it. So look, uh, what we do here at the Young Turks is unlike any other network. Uh, we have wild, uh, significant disagreements, and I know that that bothers people. Uh, and, uh, and, and so uh, I have uh, aired our disagreements on the issue of Russia uh, and almost every topic that you can imagine. So Hassan and I disagree about the, that satire to say the least. Uh, but I, what I don't want is people walking away thinking that he actually meant uh, the, the misstatement on 9-11. Uh, and, and he did pull the video. To me, that's uh, huge evidence that he realized right away that it was wrong. Uh, and look, um, that, that this is a talk shows are a fascinating and hard situation. <laughs> they're not like a blue collar job, they're not hard in that sense. 
but that's why in the past I, I've said NBC shouldn't fire Megyn Kelly, etc. Because when you, I mean, you on your Twitch channel, you work talk for what, like four, six hours in yes. a row. That was a that was from a six-hour broadcast that they clipped 14 seconds from, and if they only had clipped 60 seconds. Instead of the 14 seconds, they would understand exactly what I was referencing and exactly what I meant. It still would be wrong. It, uh. Look, the words I used were were not the best words. I understand that. Like I said over and over again, I get that. It's not it's not good words. Um, the the joke stuff we can have a disagreement on. Yeah, we we uh, obviously have a disagreement on on the style, but ultimately, my points have always been throughout my professional career. And in my personal life, and still to this day, the exact same. Obviously, 9-11 was a horrific tragedy. 3,000 Americans died, okay? 7,000 troops have died since then in endless wars. And if you're spending all of your energy getting upset at me, because I think that that is abhorrent and awful, maybe you should spend your energy elsewhere and realize that those who justify that endless bloodshed don't actually have the best interest of those young men and women at heart. All right, I want to make a correction because it's happening as we speak. Representative Crenshaw was not on Lauren Ingram's program. He was apparently on the Daily Caller. Oh, great. So no, it doesn't matter either way. Look, it didn't happen on our air, but again, I think it was wrong. And if if Representative Crenshaw wants to come on here, we would yeah. be very very happy. To I would him. love to ask him the question. I would love to have a conversation with Representative Crenshaw, and I, because people keep saying that I'm afraid to like address him in person or something, I'm not. I would love for the opportunity to be able to have a face to face conversation with Representative Dan Crenshaw, and ask him directly to his face why he thinks it's okay for the United States to keep selling arms to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and then have those arms turn around and get. Uh, it transferred over to the hands of the uh, the Al Qaeda. The last thing is, it's guys. No matter where you are in the political spectrum, it's okay to disagree. I think we've got to keep it within bounds. And so, any comments about Dan Crenshaw's injury, I think, is out of bounds. Uh, and and I think his service was great. It doesn't mean he's right about policy, but but we got to give people their credit. And and he risked his life, and he lost his uh, eye, and and for that, uh, I, I think. Uh, obviously the country owes anybody who served a, a debt of uh, gratitude. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at tyt.com app.